Hey everybody, we're live again. We took a break last week, Jimmy, because it was Memorial Day. Yes, I was outside all day, night, weekend. That's good. Oh. And, uh, well, then nobody showed up. And Jimmy's hair, as you can see, and uh, Pat Patrick, will you remove the blur in front of his face now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I added, I put a uh, bigger blur. Oh, you, know, you can have an accident anytime. Yeah, you got to be careful. Know. This man has tools while he's working on some of the furniture. And if you guys, the first time you're joining us, you know that Jimmy is the star of the online classes. He's well, one right. of the stars. I mean, one of the stars. You've I done mean, the French settee class. What else yes, have you done? Yes, on I, the have line? we got any more comments on that? Uh, I'd just well, like to know. I, we've yeah. got a lot of comments on that, right? Patrick and Michaela are here. Yeah, and a lot of viewers. I know that. A lot of people signed up for the class. Yeah, how many would you say? Do you have any idea? You don't I want to reveal check. that. And maybe that's a trade secret, Jimmy. No. Well, no. I mean, it's, it's good to know what, what um, lessons are popular and. You know what people want to see down the road. Can you imagine you're getting you're getting people watching you all over the world? But it's, I'm not getting any royalties. What's the story with the what's check a, with what's the a royalty? Uh, what's that? Yeah, oh yeah, that's like that's, that's like a paycheck in this place. Yeah, okay. I was. It's it. funny you should mention royalties. I was reading about Everyone Loves Raymond. I love that show. Yes. And he was making. He negotiated 1.8 million dollars an episode. Guess wow. his co-stars were making one hundred and forty an episode, one hundred forty thousand. I heard they got very and they, and they went on strike. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. And you know what? That's pretty kind of unhanded in a way. I mean, well, I know hey, you're doing it for yourself, but right. also you know that hey, uh, you have my, my without my co-stars, I am um, the show is nothing. They negotiated and got uh, royalties instead. I think that was smart because that show will be in syndication for a long time. Well, but, I'd rather say, yeah, I'd rather say take the royalties. For but the you know, Jimmy, you got everyone loves Raymond. I'm way up here, and then and way the at the bottom, on Broadway. way at the bottom, underneath, you got to dig a little bit. <laughs> you got the online classes, oh. man, I don't know. Well, Maybe like one say, day, huh? Well, like I say, I think we should probably, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be discussing it today. Listen, if, if 10,000 people year. started to go on the online classes, we'll consider something. I mean, really, right, Patrick? What's that again? He's he's not. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's a, that, that is, I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But I wanted to read something. It kind of on the same lines. Before we get going on some business, I saw this once in a while on Facebook. They got some really good tidbits, and I, I found something today from Global Compensation Benefits and Wellness. I have no idea what that is, but anyhow. This is how it goes. A giant ship's engine broke down and no one could repair it, so they took it to the mechanical engineer with over 40 years of experience. He inspected the engine very carefully from top to bottom. After seeing everything, the engineer unloaded the bag and pulled out a small hammer. He knocked something gently. Soon the engine came to life. The engine had been fixed. Seven days later, the engine mentioned the total cost of repairing the giant ship was $10,000 to the ship owner. What, said the owner, you did almost nothing. Give us a detailed bill. Uh, the answer is simple. The tap with the ham is $2. Now, know where to knock and how much to knock, $9,998. Lesson to learn. The importance of appreciating one's expertise and experience. Until the words, it's easy and that's all, should be set aside. Why? Because maybe the experience is the result of struggles, experiments, and even tears. Yes. Like the picture above, there's a picture here of, a, of, a, of an engine on a ship. Uh, like, uh, let me get, sorry, I missed. Like the picture above, if I do a job in 30 minutes, it's because I spent 10 years learning how to do that in 30 minutes. Right. You owe me for the years, not the minutes. So if I can finish a job in 30 minutes, it's because I spent 10 years learning how to do it in 30 minutes. You pay, you paid me for those 10 years, not the 30 minutes. Well, here's the thing, too. What if somebody came, came to you and said, I need this done right away. I need this done today. Right. And, you know, let's say, hypothetically, you had no, nothing to do and this was the job of the day. Well, I mean, if you charge, you might charge a little more. Because, well, this is going to be done in a day where you might have taken two to three. Right. So, I mean, I would charge, I mean, you know, I would tell the man right up front, it's going to cost you more, you know that, don't you? Yeah, we've and, done, we've done uh, 
videos, YouTube videos on pricing in the upholstery business. We get a lot of comments on that, by the way, Patrick. Keep in mind, if you're watching that, that's that's from a, you always have to keep the date in mind of that show because prices, as we know, inflation, right, Jimmy? Yes. Keep going up. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, look at the gas prices. It, they've doubled uh, in, in uh, yes. less than a year. Imagine that. So, and that video is really popular, that um, pricing video is one of our most popular ones. It's, so. pro it's probably good for other businesses too, I'm sure. So let me finish, there's just not much left here. This sentence reminds me of someone's advice on respecting and wisely respecting the work of others. There, I also learned to see people when, when they do not respect others at the same time he has humbled himself. Mm -hmm. Expertise and experience, that's expensive. Unfortunately, our people still look down on that. I don't know if I agree with it. Uh, I, well, I, I, I think, I think yeah. it depends on your age and your and and uh, your experiences too, doesn't it? Uh, how you feel about people who do work work with their hands and. Well, you know what's funny when they see the job done, that's when they come out and say, "Well, I could have done that." Well, then next time maybe you will. So we have a womb chair, uh, a Noel womb chair at the shop right now. Okay. Patrick, you've been taking that apart, and that's one of the hardest chairs to do, I think, oh. in upholstery. Well, so, again, maybe, you know, talking about projects and, you know, you doing something that, not for YouTube, but I think for the class for yeah. The online. Yeah, we might want to try that, but you have something, you want to do a wing chair next uh, time. I so want to do a wing back chair. I have a client. If Daphne is... If Daphne and a few other people have been interested in that, so go ahead, Jimmy. No, no, I just think that you know. Uh, Did you say you have a client? I have another client. Yes, the same client that had the settee. You mean you've been hired to do a job? Yes, I'm prostituting myself for the sake of upholstery. <laughs> no, you're a professional. Once again, I'm a pro No, well, I wouldn't go that far. So, I well, have, I mean, I time. have years to go before I even reach with you, even in, in the same league. Well, it's God. more like hours spent, you know. Yes, yes. And I, I tell you, like I say, I, I, I enjoy the work. I enjoy doing it. I, with all the, the uh, experiences I've seen in the classroom as well as here as well and, and uh, you know, the, the talks we've had about different things. Yeah, I mean, it's really... You wish you just keep going and just learning and, and going. Well, and, if you buy the classes, yeah. and I'm not trying to be a salesman, but the YouTube is great, and people yes. have learned. It's remarkable to me, I mentioned this again, that people have learned how to uh, upholster using the YouTube alone. Oh, yeah. Uh, they must be very clever because I was never designed for that. It was designed to show little you know, tips here and there. Right. And, but the online classes, you know, with Jimmy, I mean, 23 classes, the last one we did. Yeah, uh, by the way, Patrick, did you put up the channel back yet? No, we didn't even start at that one. It's going to be... Hopefully by the fall going up, because I think so, we're going to try to film something here soon with Jimmy this so the, summer that'll be coming up next so winter. When I first started working, I mean, you had you, you were lucky to have a mentor. If you're lucky to have a mentor teaching you um, on the job, which is which would be very fortunate. Uh, you know, once they show you one thing, you better remember it because they're not going to show you again. They don't like showing twice. But with Jimmy, you're seeing him. You're seeing him do the job. You can you own the videos. You reverse it. See it. You could see it as many times as you well, want. Well, it, it's great because it, especially if you did an ottoman or again yeah, uh, a settee, which you know some people may not have, but some people might be curious enough to see what, how much work this actually took. Which it took a ton. Oh yeah. my God, I was overwhelmed. But I, I think I take pride in the fact. One of the things I take pride in the fact is that every hour, every minute, has been shown on film. Right, Patrick. Every minute. Every second. Every second. Now, when you on these old shows, like with, uh, I think it's sh you know cooking shows, like with the who, who's the galloping gourmet? Remember her? Oh yes, no, that's Graham Kerr was good, the galloping gourmet. Oh, who is the woman? I always forget her name. Boston from Boston. Come on, you know who I'm talking about. The chef. Um, she, she was spoofed on Saturday Night Live. Oh, uh, Julia Child. Julia Childs. Julia Childs. So with her, you're not seeing A to Z. Uh, no, they. You're seeing, she's got at least four or five of the uh, cooking going on at the same time of the same dish, is what I'm trying to get across. Yeah, you don't see a fluid. It's not as fluid as the the show sh is. It shows you that. Right. It's 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 edited. It's cr like crazy, and uh, she makes it look so easy. In other words. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 
Well, the editor. Patrick does the editing, right? And he does a good job. He does a great job. Right? Well, so I, I'm in awe of that. I, I can't believe that, you know, I am not an audiovisual person. So you sit at home and watch your own videos, right? I mean, you, you, is that what you said? I to watch him? the ones you do. I watch the ones on YouTube <laughs> oh, really? all the time. And I say, wow. I said, wow. And then I go back. I said, wow, Kevin was young once. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a history now with the channel. I know. Channel. But you, well, you know what? I think it's a great leap from, again, talking about, you know, the little tidbits, little lessons and getting people involved to now you have online classes and actual projects. Yeah, yeah we started out as a little, it, was, it started out as a little, the channel was a little goofy and Patrick was much younger too. And it turned into a serious thing because well, more people yeah, wanted yeah. to see serious. Well, work. when people say, you start asking questions, oh, how do you do this? And right. what kind of fabric is that? And where are the tools? And how do you, oh my God, now things start. Speaking of questions, we almost got 20,000 subscribers. So if you guys like what you see, subscribe. Yes. If you don't like what you see, you can't do a dislike button anymore. How bad? Uh, you could do it, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't show up. But the, the number of dislike. Oh, no kidding. What about yeah. negative comments? Can you still do those? Uh, I think you'll always be able to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want positive comments, but we will take the negative ones. If we can improve on the show, like... For instance, Jimmy was asking for a makeup person before you came in. Is that right? Uh, no. I suggested <laughs> for you. I suggested a paper bag. <laughs> uh, here we go. Sorry. Jimmy, speaking of questions, he has the YouTube questions. I don't want to do them, though. No, please. Go on. <laughs> you can, you can, I, we gave you two little holes to see through. You should oh, be you able little, to see them. Uh, <laughs> The show is definitely going to be cut short today. Oh, come uh, on. Hey, Randy. Uh, uh, SG, how's it going? you want to read the YouTube questions? See if we well, can um, Randy has a comment. Oh, Randy has a comment. So he, or uh, question, sorry. Kevin, in your years of teaching, have you ever had a student who absolutely brought the, their project to a grinding halt because of their need for perfection? Yeah, I think Jimmy was the first one. No, not Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, actually, the thing about Jimmy, Patrick, is that he, I know you're just kidding, but this guy has more patience than Job. I don't know if you know who Job is from the Old Testament. Randy, I bet Randy does. But your patience is what makes that is what makes it good. Because you're willing to do it over and over again to, before you get it right, right? Yeah. I mean, I think you, know, you want the presentation of the chair or the ottoman, whatever it is, and you want it to be 100% or nothing. And I've had, people, I've had people who just were so frustrated... That um, and it's usually a learning. Uh, it's not a lear It's a learning style that clashes, perhaps, with my teaching style, and that's where I've had problems. For instance, I had an engineer, Andy, who engineers are really interesting people when it comes to this work. Well, they have their own. <laughs> they they have their learning approach to it. Well, they have a they have a very uh, one dimensional right. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, all every, all their work is done on paper, right? Most mm -hmm. of their work until they put it in. Until they put it in, Michaela, you know this, right? An engineer, their work is usually on a one-dimensional paper, right? Until it's put into practice in a three-dimensional sense, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Oh, right. So when yeah. they when they're trying to learn something that is tactile and three-dimensional and depth and well, everything, well, the thing is, they probably have not worked. They're limited in their hand-eye coordination with this. Right. So I had an engineer. He was so frustrated. I was I was describing how to make cuts in the back, and I was I was explaining to him in the way that I I I explain it. Um, it was maybe an over explanation, but he wasn't getting it. So I, mm -hmm. I was I was going into great detail, and I said, "When you cut it, I said, try to visual." Now this was a mistake with him. Try to visualize. The two points of the fabric in space. I, I thought that he would get this because oh he's God. an engineer. You really went over his head. <laughs> and, and, and he was so frustrated. I walked away because there's 11 other people in the class. Right. You have, right? You have enough. No, he had a piece that looked like this. The back was upholstered. When I came back, he had, had the. He took the back, didn't have to come off, but he took the whole back out. And his head was sticking through the back of the chair, and he was looking down to try to see the cut better. I said, what are you well, doing? He, he was well, very Well, people frustrated. trying to understand how to get to it. That's, you know, I mean, everybody has their different work of habits, right. their different work abilities, right. and they're trying to kind of overcome their little deficiencies. 
as as big or small as they may seem it to be. But I think it comes with the art too. I mean, upholstery is is this art to yes. us. So but, I think with an engineer, they're trying to find you know they're trying to find that universal uh, way lesson. of doing it, right. so that they can they can they have it, and other engineers can understand it. Right. Right. But see, the thing is too. You're dealing with, let's say, at the time we had you had a large class, ten to twelve different personalities, ten to twelve different learning abilities, and people having a better, pro, maybe a better. Or Don't quicker. forget, there's ten or twelve different projects. We're not doing the same project. Right. Every, I mean, right. I mean, some people did small dining chairs. I did uh, wing back, or I did. I was doing another small ottoman at one time. We did that. Everybody else was doing, you know. Uh, just different style of chairs, and it's amazing because you're kind of going, "Oh, what what are you doing today? Oh, I'm cutting. Oh, well, you know, what are you cutting?" And now all of a sudden you're doing a um, again a wingback chair. Oh my God! It's like somebody who may have never ever cut fabric before, mm. and now you're saying, "Oh my God! Well, let me help you. Let me show you. This is how we do it. This is the approach." And you're gonna kind of look at them and say. All right, they don't know how what they're doing. Let me show from. Well, oh, they have a they have a learning style that's different. So I would consider it a failure. Though this particular person did manage to finish their project finally. Okay. But it was hard for them. But I considered that my failure as a teacher, that I wasn't able to reach that person on his or her level, right? And and change styles. Very difficult to do. I'm not saying it's easy. No, it isn't. I mean, everybody, again, in their learning ability, and that's when I say learning ability, everybody has an idea in their mind about how they're going to approach it, but it may not be the right way. Right. So you've got to kind of... I'll give you another the example. Word, the big word I use is adapt. See, with you, Jimmy, you have um, you have a, a an average learning style. I would say, like, you... you uh, I don't want to use the word cookie cutter, but I, w I would say that you're kind of an average learner, put okay. it that way. Okay. Then we have learn people who learn really much differently. I had a student once, Randy. Randy, this is a good question. He he was getting everything. Everything I said was reversed. Everything I was saying was reversed. He was doing the opposite, and I knew he wasn't a bad. He wasn't doing it on purpose, Just and um, so. I, I just went with it. I mm -hmm. just went with it. I wasn't, I'm not, you know, when I'm teaching an adult ed class, I'm not there to crack the whip or, you right. know, it's not like that. It's it's part, so, it's a sociable thing. You know, right. I do miss it, by the way. Uh, we had some fun. Oh, we had a lot of fun. So Saturday this person was, was very challenging that way. It wasn't being, it wasn't, it wasn't as if he was being difficult. It just, I, I recognized there was something about his learning style that was different. And I was just going to have to run with it. And I did. So he did great, and, and then it was time to put the cambric on. Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned this before. So he's putting the cambric on. He's got, he's got, he's, I, was, I told him, this is what I said. I said, take it under, fold it under with your thumbs, and tack, the, tack at the fold mm -hmm. and make it nice. And, and then uh, we'll cut around the legs. I, I explained it to him. I came over, and he, has, he had had the fold on the up. He didn't have it tucked the other way. Okay. And it was very neat, and it looked kind of like he was doing such a neat job with it that it looked like a ribbon that he had done. Oh. So uh, I, it was the first time I said, you know, well, it, you know, I would have, I, I think I told you to do the other. He says, I know, I like it this way. So at that point, um, his, his friend was taking the class, okay. and his friend took me aside. He said, you know, I just wanted to thank you for uh, the way you teach Robbie. And I, and I said, why? And he, 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 he's, he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he, he is, um, all of his internal organs, he was, were, were, he was born with the opposite. So his, he actually did, the way he was saying was different than the way you and I say. Oh, okay. And guess what he did for work? I don't know. He was a radiologist. So when he, when he sees an x-ray. He's looking from the other side. He sees it in real real world okay. whereas we're seeing it flipped okay right so that's what that's what his upholstering style was who am i to tell him that he was wrong right but it worked <laughs> for him i mean yeah. and, and as he i'm sure if he would have continued taking the classes he would have understood a lot more about you know the foundation of upholstery and the techniques and how to kind now, of he would have had a hard time in a real upholstery shop 
if he was yeah, doing stuff. Yeah, well, a class is one thing, but working there is another. Oh boy, he, he would have had, he would have gone through a lot if he was working with with some well, of the mentors. Well, yeah, I, I mean, had. you gotta you know you gotta keep up and you gotta know what you're doing. Well, I mean, put like the, you say, I'm showing you once and you're on your own. Oh yeah. And it's not, that's not, I'm sorry, but I, I like to practice. And this is the advantage of the online classes. So if you guys are interested, check that out. If you never checked it out, it's at Upholstery on Broadway. It's yep. where you could purchase those. Somebody just purchased one class, Patrick. I forget what it was. I don't know if he's listening to me. Are you listening to me, Patrick? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out these microphones. Oh. So I'm listening in on you Patrick's guys. Trying to, uh, are, you, are they hearing me better than your father? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Are they hearing us better than, <laughs> than just the before with the Oh, it's much better. Okay. I think I'm t I think I'm talking too close into the mic and that's my problem. Okay, Jimmy's gonna read the unless there's some more comments or questions or whatever from Randy, you might have a follow up, Randy might have a follow up. Well, I, a first question is from Beverly Willis. Where is your school located? I'm interested to know. Well, the school was located in Arlington, Massachusetts on Broadway where we have a wonderful business called Upholstery on Broadway. And we used to have uh, 12 people in there at a time. And I guess we've recently remodeled with, Again. The, with the wall in the middle of it. So I think, Jimmy... That uh, that's well, a we, signal. We, we can build maybe maybe we can put a classroom on top. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We gave, we we're still Patrick, looking. You put a hammer and nail together again. You know, maybe we can do a little. <laughs> that reminds bit. me of our levels, remember? Levels. Yeah. <laughs> Today was busy. You know, that's funny you should mention that, Jimmy. I, I had a couple of cushions in the in the uh, van, and I went up to the drive-through window at the bank. And while I was waiting, I was I was taking the cushions and reversing them and working the corners and everything. And the guy looked and said, what are you doing? He's, I said, I'm working. <laughs> I was working on my cushions while I was waiting for him to do the banking. Oh. But uh, so you do what you need to do. I guess, Jimmy, uh, yeah, the classes, uh, they would have to be done. If they're going to be started again off-site somewhere else, mm -hmm. we don't know where that is yet. Mm. So, so we have to start looking, scouting spots. Well, Something near a coffee shop, but don't get on with it. I think the extreme upholstering is still on the on the board too. You know, with you. I'm not uh, jumping out of a goddamn plane. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. What's the next question, there, Jimmy? Next, well, this is a comment of the art of spitting tax. Obviously, somebody really listened to what you say, but um, you, Dusha, says I'm so trying this. So the art of spit. Spitting tax, I don't know what you did or what you said. I don't that. suggest a spit tax. I tell people not to do it. They don't have to do it. If they have a good staple gun, they don't no need to do it anymore. That is a thing of the past. Really? Jimmy. I yeah. mean, so what, what was the uh, three-ounce tax? I think it was six-ounce tax. But, you know, I knew an upholsterer that could he, he could work all day with, with three-ounce, six-ounce, and 14-ounce tax right here. Oh, my God. And he could call in any size tack up he wanted when he needed it for whatever he was doing. And guess this is a remarkable thing. You ready for this? Yeah, go ahead. He could me. eat lunch while he had the tacks in his mouth. Oh, my God. Okay. And he, he really could. And, you know, he didn't want to waste any time. And he used to eat while he was on the bench because, you know, he was piecework. Yeah. I can always tell a guy working piecework. But go yeah. ahead. Anyway, we have a question from Randy. Although the staples, um, how often do you oil your stapler? What kind of oil do you use? I have some regular air tool oil that I use in my other air tools, three drops in the air connection for the use. I've been reluctant to use this on my upholstery stapler because I'm afraid of stains. Your words of wisdom, please. Randy, I have a confession to make. I never, ever have oiled my staple guns, ever. That BEA gun will go on forever without being oil. And the reason I don't oil it is because I've had that happen. You oil it, and then you shoot it, and you, you're working on something, and you stain it, and you and you finish. So I don't oil them. If it breaks, I send it out, have it fixed. And those those guns, I think, can go on for years without without jamming or without breaking. Now, how, what's the oldest gun you have here now? What's the, what's the usual year? I have a gun that was used down at the Alamo by Davy Crockett here. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I don't know, Jimmy. That's a good question. I think well, I, I think of that gun that I have, if you've seen it, it has wear on it. Um, how many notches? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
It has wear on it, um, okay. so it's probably about six years old. Well, I have a question from Kathy Terrible. What kind of glue should I use if I'm doing the double piping on outdoor pati patio chairs? Outdoor? I've never had that question. I'm going to tell you something right now. Uh, even an epoxy outside exposed to the weather is going gonna, is gonna to be compromised. I think she would be better off stapling the double weld on. You could staple double weld on. What you do uh, is, what's her name, Kathy? Yes. So, Kathy, what you do is you can you can you can paint, not paint, but usually ma if you have black fa fabric you're working, you can color the staple and put them in, and then shoot the staple in between the piping. You have to be careful. You have to have good aim, and staple it about every three inches. The reason I say I don't think any any glue would work for outdoor furniture. I've never seen outdoor furniture with double welt on it, by the way. Well. I mean, couldn't you use like a heavy glue? What other than the, other than the glue that you normally use? What other glue would you use? We used to use Elman's glue, and we used to pin tack the the, the double welt on every okay. three or four inches where you'd put a staple. Okay. Leave it in there for at least twenty four hours, and then twist out the sta the the uh, tack, the six ounce tack. So that would last. That's how we used to do it. Okay. It's a little. It, it's not as you know for beginners. If you're a beginner and you're putting double piping on, not outdoor like this. I have no advice. The only advice I have for her, and you have to be careful with the staple, Jimmy. Uh -huh. You have to use a staple that's not going to rust, right? Yeah. They have so, so the ones that you use, do they? They're galvanized. So does that mean they're not going to rust? Nobody's maybe over a period that. of time. Maybe over a couple of summers, maybe. Yeah, yeah. you have to be careful with outdoor furniture. There's no such yeah, thing, in, in my opinion, there's no such thing as outdoor furniture or cushions. There's no such thing. You should always be covering them or bringing them in. I mean, I have outdoor cushions we always have to bring in when it rains. We're looking at the weather throughout the summer. Well, it's the abuse. I mean, they really take... They take, know. I mean, acid rain and uh, the well, sun they, and everything. Yeah, I mean, some people leave them out, you know, not, well, say from, what, April till October. Right. You know, and if the weather's maybe a little bit leaner, you know, if everybody, everybody's outside, what they get like the fire pits... Okay, now we're out till November. And outdoor furniture is so uncomfortable, isn't it? Yes and no. I mean, they, they're making it much, much more well. It pleasurable. depends. It depends on how, what you. I mean, there's a company around here that's very expensive. The more you, you, you know, you're gonna have to well, pay for made, it. Well, they've made it basically into not just outdoor furniture where you have a little, uh, you know, a little sit down chair. They've made it to the point of like relaxing. Yeah, it's like a whole living room. Sometimes. Oh yeah, I was yeah. actually it was somewhere else yesterday, and I think they wanted thirteen hundred dollars for like an AP set. Oh, that's not bad. No, no, it was nice. I mean, nice table and chair set, and a little little coffee table. Yeah, you stuff. don't think you're going to get a good seating experience for that little money, right? No, but you know what? You got again. You're going to rely on the cushions, hopefully, and the style of the chair, nice and a little wide, and right. you know, basically, you're like it's almost like you're sitting in your own living room. I had a, a customer ask me. It's funny you should, that this question came up. It was a three seater swing sofa. Oh. From a, this is from. Uh, you could picture this up. Uh, at a New York a lake somewhere, like along well, wait, Lake Winnipesaukee, one of those front porches, those big porches. Mm -hmm. Three seater. It had three seat cushions, three back cushions, and oh, a, wow. a sofa swing. That's that's very unusual. Yeah, that's very custom made. Yeah. Well, let's get to a comment uh, on the uh, how to upholster the 1860s chair part five. Another and, popular video. Really. Yeah. Oh, well, you weren't in that one, Jimmy. No, I'm probably one of the few. But anyway, Judy Welliver says that uh, you're teaching Demeter rocks. So. Rocks. Oh, wow. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. Yeah. Would you agree Not with that, Jimmy? Old man. Would you agree with that, Jimmy? Or would you uh, say? Well, rolls? yeah, you put a lot of try to put a humor into it. I think you know. I think Patrick tries to capture that all the time. Well, it's all boring stuff, though. Well, you got to make it light, enlightening a little bit. You want to make sure people are getting the lesson across what you're trying to say. And I think you know a little bit of humor, to, like anything else, whether you you you're showing a cooking lesson or whether you're painting a room, you want a little bit of a humor, or at least people keep people in, in, involved with you. Sure. You know, so why not? So in the online classes, though, we really can't do that too much. It's really serious, isn't it, Jimmy? 
Uh, Once in a while, you, you know, you lose it a little well, bit. Well, yeah, we, you know, you have to you, reel you in. <laughs> well, you know, he loses I mean, it. I, again, with the, the settee, which was a long, yeah, winding time. I mean, I never thought that it would go twenty-three lessons. I was yeah, like, I please, dear God. But every second, like Pat, I said every minute, but Pat just said every second was filmed. Oh God, God bless you, both of you. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys did a great. They get job. a lot of credit, I'll tell you, because. Um, I've tried it. Have I? I've, I've tried it. It's hard. It's hard to keep that camera still. It's hard to for the angles. Forget the editing. I, I wouldn't even know how to do that. Go ahead. What's the next one, Jim? Well, the next comment: How to repulse the 19th century? Is it Biedermeier chair? Biedermeier, yeah. Biedermeier chair. Yeah. That horsehair fabric looks amazing. I had a Biedermeier breakfast table and two chairs. The previous owner unintentionally ruined the amazing veneer top with a leaky base. And the chairs needed some love. The wood on the chairs is mostly okay, some chips, but the upholstery has seen better days. I love the antiques, but this is the first one I've ever owned, and I have no idea how much it would cost to have them repaired. Is he asking for the reupholstery on it? Yeah. Well, I think probably what what needs to be done to it, and probably to bring it back back to where it was. Where it was. Well, the ones that I did were horsehair interior okay and they had a beautiful what we call a cake and the cakes on the beat of my the, the the cake is built off the the piece of furniture okay and then it's put on and i think i showed how to repair that okay so if we don't do that uh, the my style is we upholster onto the frame which i think i've explained this before is a better way i had a, a swedish intern once uh, yes I remember her saying, yes you tell me quickly G Gisla, she was beautiful and I mean, and her work was beautiful, what she did. She had um, the cake that she built off the pieces, and she showed me how to do it. Uh, they do that in Sweden and overseas, but she she then puts it on, but it's only attached with one row of tacks, or tacks in this case. Whereas when you're building it on the chair, each layer gets tacked. So that if, oh. you, if you have a failure of one row of tacks... It, it the whole cake and this is what happened to these Biedermeier chairs. The whole cake is is compromised. It caves in. So we repaired that, uh, but it's just a style difference. It still takes a long time for that to happen. So well, yeah. I mean, I think you you want to make sure that everything's secured. It's right. It's going to stay there. I have to say, every upholsterer has a different style. Believe it or not. Yes. I mean, eventually, when you start getting involved, more involved, you say, "Wait a minute! I can try it this way. Let me do it this way." Oh, I'm going to use. This. You could hear the arguments. You wouldn't believe the arguments. And every upholsterer thinks they're the best upholsterer they ever lived. Oh, I don't know. No matter how good they are. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll ever get to that. But anyway, the next one is from Randy. This is applying trim to the French chairs. So wanted to thank you finally starting putting my gimp on the hot, on with the hot glue. Up to now, I have been using fabric glue because I do not like how hot glue works for me. I purchased a high quality, high temperature glue gun, and that makes all the difference. Yeah, I think we we told people that some glue guns come with a low and a high setting, and my glue gun I've had taped on the high because uh, the low doesn't do the job. It doesn't make the glue as hot as it should be. Yes. So the only downside to this, when you have a hot glue, um, the the ones you get in the store, they will not give you the, the high setting because they don't want to be sued. So when you get glue on your finger from the from the you know the craft store, the art store, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to get burnt, but still it needs it's to come off hot. fast. But with the with the high setting on the professional guns, it'll do the job, well, it, but it will burn you. So you have to be careful. How much does something like that cost? They're a little bit more expensive than the the, the guns you get in the uh, arts and crafts store. Really? But they're, they're useless for professionals. Don't ever buy one, you guys. Go go. If you if you do see one available at these stores, and if it has a high low setting, mm -hmm. you might be okay. Okay. But you're gonna have to put it on the high and keep it on the high. Ah, okay. But Randy was probably frustrated because he had glue guns that were not doing the job. That were okay. not, glue, not glue gun. Well, I have a question from John Watson. I am looking for a supplier of upholstery tools and supplies in the Edmonton, Alberta, Canada area. Would you have any connections with anyone I could get items I need from? I just subscribed to your channel. Oh, good. So, Patrick, do we ship to Canada? So we ran into an issue with international shipping. So we don't ship to Canada. I mean, we do, but 
if people have to be willing to pay a lot they in shipping. They very expensive. Yeah, very. But very I'm sure there's. I mean, we don't really know of any place. But I'm sure our good friend Janine wanted wanted some supplies in Australia, but it would it would have been cheaper to buy an airline ticket. And, and put wow. the suitcase yeah, that, for the big stuff, that, especially. That, 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 I wouldn't mind taking like a weekend trip over. But, you know, You'd hop over there, get it, hop <laughs> over yeah, to us. Yeah, 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 I know. Crocodile Dundee and all that. I no, I was thinking more like the kangaroo, Timmy. Oh, okay. I missed that one. That's so. okay. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> What's the name of their uh, airline? That's a good trip. Qantas. Good for you. Yeah. Well, Randy said he bought his at a woodworking tool store. Yeah, that's where you'd get one of the good glue guns. And the glue the, the glue sticks are, I don't think they're as important. And what's the next one, Jimmy? How to run an upholstery shop. So this is from Brian C. He says, you're right. Even with the high-tech tools today, the most sophisticated shops still have large floor charts hanging on walls to help them select pots and materials and process each item of product fast and simply the order without always going to your computer or tablet. So I got news for you. I think even agencies, I know, I know that our secret government agencies use that same system. And I, I'm, I'm lifting up my date book. Here's my date book, you guys. I still have a date book. These guys don't have date books. No. But I, I have date book and I have the email. I don't use my phone for scheduling uh, on the calendar. I have found that you can add notes. They probably can do this easy, I know. But this is how I do it. And then I can quickly reference this and go back. Somebody calls. And uh, actually, believe me, with the system that I have, Jimmy, mm -hmm. with that posted system that he sees on that, mm -hmm. I look like... I'm a genius when it comes to my customers. Well, I don't, you, you've because used I have this down. How many years have you used you, that? I've I have books. Patrick probably knows. You can go down the basement. I keep them. Why? These go back <laughs> because they're fun to keep. I think I have them going back to before uh, 19, 1990. Oh, and, and early. I think it's time to clean that basement out, Mr. Uh, Patrick. That's yeah. what I said. Yeah. yeah. But someday they might be worth something, Jimmy. Who knows? Yeah, okay. Just like that first issue of Upholstery Month thing, which, of course, we were going to get Patrick with his new hairstyle. But Yeah, <laughs> oh, right, right. You know, well, I mean, it's, so it's, it's, it's still worth a shot. So anyway... Is there a follow-up to that or no? Uh, no, we just have a, qu uh, a statement we got from Calvin Schimmel. Uh, fixing a pop button for free. So, he says, Great idea. I tried with the washer, but I could not get it to hold. But you got me thinking. I took a white plastic drywall anchor, drilled a hole through the middle of the string, and sharpened the point. I screwed this into the back of the couch, stuffing through the hole, and it held. Thanks for helping me know how to solve the fix. That's a two, three, four, five hundred dollar fix that that an upholstery would charge. Yeah, if you were really, uh, if you were an upholstery, a dishonest upholsterer, maybe you're not even a dishonest upholsterer, but somebody that wanted to make more money on a small job, mm -hmm. you would say, "Oh, a pop button. I'm going to have to pick that up and bring it to the shop. We have to take the outside back off. We have to go in. We have to make sure that it's holes. Then we place the outside back. That could be a five hundred dollar repair. Wow." Uh, but um, that's why those are popular, Patrick, because we're saving people money from all. We've we've got more, a lot of uh, comments on that. Yeah, we have to do another one soon. You can come up with a, another. Like, well, we come money up with saving, another. I, well, I, mean, if we, I mean, again, we're discussing for the next year, the uh, up and coming season, what projects we want to do other than the um, wing back of, for me. Yeah. And Michaela. Michaela yeah. has a project coming up. Yeah. So, yeah, well, what time are we here on Saturdays, guys? Six o'clock? Is that, that, that no? Uh, Saturdays, uh, I think I'm in bed. Uh, well, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, six o'clock. Well, you maybe, I don't know. We'll see what Dad wants to do. So, do we have any other questions? No, only Randy, uh, well, this was from last week. Randy said, Happy Memorial Day. Hope you were outside having, enjoying the nice weather and put some meat on the grill. So, uh, Do we have a Facebook, anything on Facebook? Is that it or not? That's it. Yeah, no Facebook today. Well, we had one. Uh, we skipped a week there, Patrick. Right? Yeah, things have been quiet because we've been posted a video trying to catch up here. We haven't filmed any videos okay. on YouTube, which we got to do. 
We're going to talk um, about, yeah, go well, ahead, Patrick. Well, yeah, and then we're going to be doing Jimmy's class soon, so things are going to start going again. Okay, this okay. is the segment where yeah. Kayla asked me for estimates. Uh, but I'm going to see if, I want to see, Jimmy's been around upholstery for 10 years now, right? You, you took a class that. 10 years. I remember the first day Jimmy came in. Uh, he you came in. the lights, we put, them, yeah. we, we put some lasting We had 11 on. women, and they were very nice. They had been taking the class. All of a sudden, this guy comes in with a fluorescent coat on and uh, a supervisor. He's a supervisor to a major transit uh, what system in Boston, system. and uh, he comes <laughs> walking in, and and uh, Jimmy was looking for his space. He had his tools. He had his hat. He had. Did you have a, a construction? No, I was looking on? good that day. You had a silver construction hat on. No, you I had your, really you, you had your vest on. Your your white. No, not even that. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only guy in I there. I was the only guy that did. I yeah. Actually, I think it was the only guy for the first two, three classes. I know you were. I and know. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, and you were shy, weren't you? We oh, had yeah. to draw you out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was shy. <laughs> now, Jimmy was a great addition because these, I think you were, I, I hate to say this, and I hope you don't, you're don't. you not offended by this, but I think I, I observe, I'm an observer of human kind, I think. But you were a novelty item, Jimmy. <laughs> I usually <laughs> am. My mother always said. <laughs> no, yeah. you, you know, most of, the, most of the women who take my class were from uh, very, you know, refined and, you know, educated and dignified. And You're saying Jimmy's stupid? No, I'm not. I'm not. But Jimmy and I, cause I can relate to Jimmy because I'm a working guy. Yeah. I'm a working guy. I mean, I went to school. I've gone to school. I have a degree. But you I, you I, were I, a great I, addition. Yeah. You were a great um, addition. People, people needed to. Uh, we need to. I we, think we'd all, we, you and I would always joke about things. Right. I think it's good without getting personal. I think know? it's good to bring classes together. I, well, like I say, we had great classes on Saturday mornings. Yeah. Where you know somebody. I mean, we'd all came in a little bit early. You came in with donuts one time, didn't I, you? I had muffins. I had donuts all the time. What does anybody want next week? Yeah, you know, blah, blah, you know. I mean, we had the local coffee shop down the street. You would bring all kinds of stuff in. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was fun. Do you remember the day that I came in uniform? Oh, and all the girls were going gaga. Yeah. They didn't ever saw you in uniform, Jimmy. Yeah, so I, I don't know why I had come in on you. With, I, I had missed a class for some reason. Right, right. And I came in in uniform. I, I don't know, to speak to you about something. Uh, five right. Minutes. You had a badge, too. Although he was wearing a uniform in the town during his appearance. So oh, yeah, people, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could check Jimmy if you don't know, if you haven't heard. Jimmy's in the movie The Town. Yeah, for all five seconds at an Academy Award winning moment. And Jimmy, we, me and Michaela watched it recently and we... The first, uh, the first, right in the first beginning there is where you were. Says, oh, did you see him? Yeah, I did. I paused it. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> and I rewinded it. I was like, uh, yeah, well, yeah, actually, uh, that picture should be on as the cover of the town. That's what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've always said that's that. That's good, though. That's so your opening credits. Everyone said, how'd you do it? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, you're in the movie. I'm like, what are you talking about? And, but somebody has said you might be in the movie. You didn't even have a line. These, I didn't, no, these I, peanuts are making me thirsty, right, Fabi? Yeah, he was helping. He was giving somebody directions. <laughs> that was yeah, he, at least Kramer I, had that one line when Woody Allen approached him on that Seinfeld. It was one line that well, he had yeah, to I say. Well, yeah, I guess if I had a line, I probably would what have would it have been? Up the string, uh, line up to the left. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Everybody breathe in and to get the next All people the in. All aboard! <laughs> <laughs> You do that well. You've had experience. I did that to somebody. I did that on on a, on a on, on a platform one day as a joke, and the guy laughed. He says, "I don't believe you said that." I said, "Neither do I." So, so we have to keep this upholstery related. So, what was the last time they had upholstered seats on those trains? On the well, on the they kind of have have them now, but they were hard fabric and they they bonded to the they glued to the. Oh, you know the frame. Of there's the, no art to that. No, no. I mean, I, I, why would you bother? Oh yeah, you don't know, even bother the plastic. No. Just keep the, this. I'm sitting on a plastic seat here. Yeah, this is just so also oh, comfortable. Are too. Thank you. Isn't that way. comfy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would think an upholster would have some comfortable yeah, seats. Thank you for buying the coffee that I had. You're welcome. Myself. Yeah. I was here from last week. <laughs> You know, All right, well, what type of business? Okay, we got it. Listen, you're distracting me away from Michaela. Michaela, we're going to see if Jimmy can answer these questions, and then I'll, I'll uh, 
I'll chime in if I have to. Uh, well, this one isn't an upholstery. Uh, this isn't one Jimmy can answer. Okay. I think, oh, but good. This one it says. Um, uh, this w they they finally got back to us. This is somebody who originally said, "Hello, I'm working on a reupholstery project for an old car with seats that were originally stuffed with horse hair. Preformed pads of that material are no longer available, and I am looking for a s suitable raw material to form as a replacement. I saw on your website that you offer something that would may work for me." They linked the rubberized horse hair. Yes. Would it be possible to get a sample that I could use to compare with the original padding to see if it has the right properties, stiffness, density, etc.? Um, you replied with five yards as minimum. And five feet. Yeah. Well, yeah, five feet. You said five yards, but. Oh, did I? Yeah, five feet. Um, thanks for writing back. I'm fine with your minim minimum, but I'd still like to get a small sample to make sure that it has the right density and other properties for this purpose. Would, it, would it be possible to get that, please? Uh, well, if we do that for one person, we'll do it for everybody, right? So I think the, w the reason we, we did 5, 10, and 15 increments is for this exact reason. I mean, five feet, 5 feet is the minimum that we can offer. Well, I mean... Because when we cut that, example. when you cut it, Mm -hmm. You you cut more if you cut a sample it has to be at least four by four, but then you have a you have the whole other width. That, uh, I hate to be cheap and petty. No, but, but you know what I I think well, that it, if we, I we could just tell them well you're gonna have to come in and look at it. Where are they from? Is he local? I don't know. Didn't say. Well, you know what it could, you could say if you're local to Arlington, you come in and take a look. If you're not local to Arlington, check out your local upholsterer, and I'm sure that they would have some that they would let you look at. There you go, Jimmy. Well, that and the fact, I mean, you say five feet by whatever it is, you should get an idea of what it's going to look like too, and how it's going to feel over the. Spot. I guarantee you that it's the right thing for him too. Oh yeah, I you mean, know, he, it nothing, is the right thing for there him. Is, it's better than horse hair in some cases. Well, you can't layer it enough. I mean, how would you layer that? You can that? layer it. Yes, but, but I mean, without the horse hair, how would you do it? And, and have it sustain itself. Well, he's going to have to put horse hair over the sp whatever spring work he has, yes. the rubberized horse hair. Right. And then he's going to have to put some foam in it Yes. to make up the difference. If he's got three or four inches, you can't, you can't make up the difference all in the horse hair. The horse hair is a good foundational. It's okay. foundational. So how many inches of foam would that be for the car seat? Is that it was standard? Do you know? Well, I don't know. It depends on the car, I guess. But you have to be careful. Car seats, it's a very specific height mm. to the to the steering wheel, right? Yes. And I think they're much more padding than there was years ago if, he, if the car is right. much older. Right. Depending on what it is. I mean, we don't do that. I, I've, I've never done automobile. People keep asking me to do it. Well, you know what? But, you know, maybe if you wanted to for the coming year do a little video on, I know there's a place in, in Belmont that does the upholstery for cars. Well, if you did a video on automobile upholstery, yeah. you're going to be on the sewing machine most of the time. Because all, yes. all of the, all of the st it's a lot of stitch work. Yes, because of the details. Involved. And very little attachment. It's, it's, it's usually done with hog rings and clips and not staples to the to the so metal totally frame. Different, totally different. Totally style. different. And you really need, the setup is very costly. And you need at least a two-bay garage. You need to be working on two cars at once. Mm -hmm. One bay doesn't cut it. You need, you need because of the, the nature of the work and, the, and just the, the flow of the work, you need two bays. So that means you need, you need a, and you need a parking, you need parking. You know, and in, and let me tell you something. That's a that's a hard thing around where I am here, and in, in, uh, in this neck of the woods, it's a hard thing to find. Usually, you don't find empty garage, two bay garages too often. Mm, no, you have to really actually. There's, there is one down from you. Oh yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> but that's that's. I mean, I don't know what condition it would be in. I mean, yeah. But it, it is interesting to find out what, what how the how the approach is with regard to. Right. Oh, geez, I really want to do this car over. How much is it going to be? And, I mean, I think maybe some people might be curious about that. Who knows? Okay. Well, has it got a next one there that maybe Jimmy can answer? Um, Michaela? Yeah. She's looking. She's looking. No, I know. I just want to make... I'm, I'm just... For people who... Because she's off camera, we're just... 
people who know who that disembodied voice is. Well, I'll read this one. I need to make a new window seat cushion. It's a rectangle with a cutout corner, dimensions in drawing attached. 67 inches by 24 inches with one corner cut out on a, on a diagonal. The cushion can be no more than three inches high to fit the space. I have some fabric left over from a different project that I would like to use. It's a small check pattern, photo attached, so there's no repeat. I have 3.58 yards and it <laughs> appears enough. it was cut mm -hmm. along its length. Not enough. Current width is 39 and 39.5 inches. Would it work to use the fabric on top of the new cushion and have the and have different plain fabric on the underside of the cushion? Yeah. We're, we're getting a lot of, I, I've had a lot of problems with customer's own material. It's either the increments aren't right, the, the widths aren't right, and, or a lot of people don't realize that fabric has a shelf life. I mean, there's a lot of fabrics on eBay that, that are for sale that are old, they might look pretty, but they're old fabrics. They've been laying around, they get dry. And when, you, when you're working with a dry fabric, you're going to be challenged. It's really difficult. So we've had to insist on uh, selling fresh, our own fresh fabric. I don't use that a lot, Michaela. You've never heard me talk like that. I've never said that. I've never said fresh fabric to people. Uh, if they're buying my fabric, I really don't have to say that. But if they're, you know, somebody like this, you might want to answer them that we do not work COMs. You need, we, we there's a problem too when you introduce two different fabrics onto a sewing machine too that's another problem especially to a long fitted seat mm -hmm. the fabric you know you're going to really have to use your skill sets to get the fabric walking feet don't talk about walking feet because you still need a skill even with the walk people think they get a big walking foot machine machine mm -hmm. does all the work for them it's not true you still need some skill behind that no matter mm -hmm. what type of machine you're working with um, I don't prefer it. I don't prefer a walking foot machine for that reason. I know I know how I know my skill level and what I want on a juki. I have a juki hair, but when you introduce a, 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 a different fabric to um, any, sometimes people want contrast well to two different fabrics, three fabrics. It, it's pulling, it's really pulling uh, here and there, and it's really hard to sew. Mm. So we're not going to do that. We'll, we'll tell her that she needs. Um, She's going to need uh, six yards of fabric, and she said she has an existing cushion, or she needs new foam. I didn't get that part. It says I need to make a new window seat cushion. It's a rectangle with a cutout corner. So she leaves Dimen out dimensions in. Yeah, uh, it said the cushion can be no more than three inches high to fit the space. So it looks like they need a new cushion. Well, let's say six yards. So, Jimmy, this is a little hard for you. To yeah, the, I'm. I'm trying to imagine it. I know three. I'm imagining in three, the three inches high. But I, guess maybe, I don't know. She she wants yardage. She wants co labor I, cost, and she wants how much the foam and daycron is going to cost. So there's four different. Yeah, at that's, least that's four that's different things going, Right. So six yards of fabric, um, five hundred and seventy-five dollars labor, and. You got that so far? And three hundred and twenty five dollars for new foam and daycron. It adds up, doesn't it? Wow. Foam has gone up, but guys, foam has gone up twenty five to thirty percent or or more. In the last year? In the last year, year and a half. Wow. Because of the shortages, it's crazy. It's still short. Hey, we're not yeah. talking baby formula at least. I mean that's that's a bigger problem. Uh, I actually mean, I was I was at a store yesterday and the shelves were wiped out. That's crazy. I think what's going on now is people are hoarding, right? Like they always. Well, I mean, you can't, you can't, you know, if they have children in the house, I mean, they're probably, you know, maybe stretching that a, a little bit too. I you mean, can't blame somebody. I mean, that's one case of hoarding that I would say go for it. I, well, I, I, I would. Let me, let sorry, me say, but in my history, okay, in my history with children, when I had my oldest daughter, who is now 43, a can of. Baby formula was seventy nine cents. Wow! So it's probably a, I don't even know what it is. It's up. gone oh, up. It's it's over twenty dollars a can now. Wow! Oh, you're kidding me! Oh yeah! I oh, think that's it's, crazy. I think it's yeah. I mean, so I mean, it's ridiculous. It's it's such a. <sighs> Let's get back to Michaela. Yeah. Okay, so this is another one, but I I could even answer this Let, one. Let's see if how Jimmy does. Uh well I'll. I'll 
you'll understand why I said I could answer this one okay, when I read well, it. Okay, we'll all, well, I'll throw in our two cents. Um, hello, my name is, is, is Ian, and I called and left a message last week, follow, following it up now with this email. I have a Victorian-style two-seat love seat that it is needing reupholstered. I have the fabric I would like to use to do so. The second thing is I would like to know if you do custom sewing for an awning. <laughs> well, we don't do awnings. So that would be a no and a no. Well, we had recently a couple of customers kind of really want us to do the labor, and we've, we've charged cutting charges. So you, you can, well, why don't you just present it like that? If they want to pursue it, we'll, we can make an exception on the cutting charges if they, if they want. Just say we usually we like to use our own fabric. Does you know he have a say. picture of the uh, project he wants to do? No, no. I like to see it. It'd be nice. It's another thing, you know. This sounds a lot of the inquiries we get. You could tell they're half-hearted inquiries. Or well, I mean, I think that well, they they may forget. Oh, do I throw a picture in? Do I not throw a picture in? Do I really need to? But you have to answer them all. I mean, you oh can't yeah. I mean, them. well, I think they people just want to know. It's courteous. Yes. We spend a lot of time on these answering. Well, I mean, I think if you, you know, if you said yes, how about if you send us a picture, then we can see where we can go from there. Just for our friends who are thinking about starting an upholstery business, but we the way we do it, I think, is smart. We we get these we get these estimates on the website, either you know through Gmail or sometimes through through texting, and it's kind of like the first stage you know where you, where you give out all these estimates and maybe uh, fifty percent of the people you hear back from, mm -hmm. and then and then maybe twenty percent or fifteen percent actually make it into the shop to look at fabric, and then it even filters down even more. They come. And you give them the estimate in person. Uh, this is happening more because I think because of inflation, they in, they they take the time to come in to meet you to you know to to talk about the job to get a hard copy you know hand copy made up, and then um, we're finding that um, I would say twenty percent of that is you don't hear from them. So I have a file. It's kind of an inactive recent file I call it okay. in my book. Okay. in this book and then you know a couple of weeks three weeks go by four weeks go by then i start calling those people so let's say i have 10 of those uh maybe one or two say oh i, I i'm still gonna do it i just was you know this happened this happened yeah but then the other eight well sometimes people don't expect especially because it's it's not like you go into a bakery and saying okay i'm buying a cake and even the price of like again things have gone yeah, so price much points up. are interesting yes you know. but when it's something totally different and people don't understand the cost yeah. the labor cost involved and especially with the fabric now all of a sudden it's you know at 70 dollars a yard let's say i need 10 yards to do this sofa for example 12 yards oh my god already it's 800 well oh, all wow. of that is like you're, you're preparing them like what we're doing right now we're preparing people uh and giving them an estimate on fabric but we can't quote direct we could give averages right so what's the next one Michaela um, um, how much well because they didn't rep they didn't provide a picture so right. um, what should I say about the cutting fee how much thirty dollars a yard and and they need to send a picture to get the labor and the and the yard adjustment we need to make sure they have enough fabric because like the other customer, they, people don't know how to estimate. Yeah. Right. It's well, I mean, right. I mean, you see, you know that basically a wingback chair is seven, eight yards, depending on what it is. Right. You know, so certain things are what it is. And now for a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still, I was answering the, no, no, the rest fine. of the I question. All right. And so there's uh, two more, it looks like. Um, Kevin, did you find the one? It's, it should be, it's from today. Naomi? It's, it's, a, yeah, so it's on that chain. So there's two of them. 
uh, go to yeah Naomi's first. Well, this is uh, Naomi Muller and a Mueller. That's a coincidence, isn't it? So the first one is they say. We would like to reupholster the seats and replace the cane on the backs of our six dining room chairs. The seat tops are approximately 16 by 18, and the cane back surface is, is 14 by 14. Do you have a general estimate of the cost? So we don't do caning, but the seats are $150 each and one yard each. So they want to get rid of the cane oh. and oh. replace it with an upholstered back. That's a good idea. So that's going to cost per chair. Um, Right now, it's three hundred twenty-five dollars per chair. How many chairs again? Six. Six. Wow. About twenty-two. I kind of even lowballed that because we have to recreate the back. Yeah. You know, it's, it's do a you want to adjust the I price? Might have to adjust the price. Okay. So how did I? You know, you guys, I caught myself there, Jimmy. Uh, so I'm looking at a job like this. Sometimes you have to go back on the hours. You know. The shop time's eighty dollars an hour, which I have to consider going that. Well, I can't go up because um, even though inflation is going up, mm -hmm. uh, that first thing that I read today, uh, it's hard to convince people uh, when there are other people giving estimates lower than you. What makes you special? You know, there's a lot tied into this. So right now, it's frozen at eighty dollars an hour. It actually should be ninety or a hundred dollars an hour at this point. But I can't, if I did that, I would <laughs> be fewer work. Right. So it's all a consideration. So when I look at this, um, I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking at least five hours of work each. So I'm, I'm revising it to, f to 400. But I'm not going to say 400, you guys. So 80 times 5 is 400, right? Yes. I'm not going to say 400 because there are six chairs. Ah. So I'm going to go 390 on this. So, you know, this is what you have to do. It sounds like the price is right, right? <laughs> but, you know, we know consumers, don't we? We're consumers ourselves. Yes, so people will say, is it worth the cost? So 390 sounds better than 4 because yes. they're automatically going to take the 4 number. It goes 4 times 6, $2,400. Wow, I didn't expect it to be that much. But that $10 difference kind of softens it a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's It's not... It's not, you know, it's just, well, it people, should be, people, it should be. People still want to deal in, in regard to whether it's the labor cost or how it was done. Well, we, we, we reinforced this. We right. did something extra for you to know that this is going to be, we put things basically back better than it was. Yeah, in the real world right now, the $100 an hour, they should be $500 a piece. Yes. But but that's I know I want I, I want the job. Well, well, the other thing is you can't to me. Uh, the yardage is different too. By the way, before I forget, Michaela, yeah, the yardage because I, I want to throw a double wealth on that. But don't say that yet. But let's say two two and a half yards each chair. Okay. Just it, that covers me with the double. So how double. much total? Two point five yards uh, each Six and three hundred ninety dollars each. They could. Well, how many how many yards total? Two two point five times six. Okay. Is so that's 15. what fifteen. Fifteen yards. So Michaela knows she's trying to save another email for uh, exchange. People people uh, every time you say this is another tip for you guys who are pricing out there, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you 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 give them one price. Mm -hmm. They'll say each, or is that the all of them? <laughs> so what, Michaela? Well. Because Michaela is figuring out, given the bottom line, what's the bottom line? Mm -hmm. But notice how I'm hesitating here. Okay. So the bottom line is hard to say, but you know there's going to be a follow-up email, right, Michaela? If you don't give them the bottom, she's shaking her head. Yes, yeah, she's smart. She's shaking her head because she knows. That there'll be a follow-up email. Well, with that also, I mean, you have the fabric to kind of to put, show them to say, yeah. you know, the fabric could be between thirty dollars, let's say. Well, and unfortunately, the thirty-dollar yard fabrics are no more, Jimmy. Mm, okay. Yeah, What's the average nice. now, Michaela? Yeah. Uh, the average is like eighty-eight dollars a yard. Wow. wow. But the, and that's a, a domestic design fabric. That's a good fabric, which we, what we have. That's not. 
uh, Schumacher, Lijofer, uh, Scalamandre, those companies. Mm -hmm. Those, are, I think, average in 150, you think? Yeah, even more than that. One, 200? Probably. Wow. But I'd, I'd, well, it also depends on the material, too, because I remember uh, looking through some of Kravit fabrics, uh, Kravit and Lijofa fabrics, about somebody who was looking for silk. Those oh cost God. those cost upwards of four fifty five hundred six hundred dollars a yard plus. Wow. Yeah, it's it's getting it's getting crazy. I, it's hard for me to say even eighty eight on average. It's hard for me to well, say. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you're trying to. I mean, you were at thirty because Jimmy. I know uh, I'm somebody just told me that they saw you. I, I had my spies out there in the world. And they saw you at a place, uh, a very. I'm not going to say the name. You were in a fabric store. And you were looking for fabrics, even though you have somebody in the business. You were going to seek out new life and new civilizations well, and new I fabrics. Have a, if I have a client <laughs> and they, and he doesn't want to spend, I'll say. Right. But I mean, I try for him to explore. Low budget, Jimmy. You are you are well, on a low no, budget. Said, you, You're know, out I, there. I, you know, I, again, you know, we're talking about the settee, for example. I was not happy with the fabric he chose. Well, it was hard for you to work. Well, it wasn't as strong as the, as the fabrics that worked. But it came in the out past. beautiful. Yes, it did, and I think to a point, it maybe that type of fabric helped us with finishing the job. Right. Um, but that said, you know, I mean, I haven't really, you know, in the, in in the years time since we did the settee, uh, God knows how how much. If I were, were to walk in this particular store again, uh, what you know, what you want versus what you can afford what you want to spend on. Right. You know? oh, by the way, you go into stores, manufacturers, fabrics, Michaela, you're talking about for them to, to, they buy that fabric for dollars, like five, seven to ten dollars, ten at the most. Mm -hmm. And and they, and they're making, they don't care that the fabric's not going to last a long time. It's not, they don't, it doesn't even come. When you get a sample, mm -hmm. it doesn't even give any details about the double yeah. abrasion, or the abrasion or anything like that because, that fab and they do not want to sell that fabric to a customer. Why? And because it's the it's it's they know it's flimsy. So a customer comes in, if they do insist and they do sell the fabric, the markup is four hundred percent, Jimmy. Four hundred percent. Well, you know, there's always burlap, and we can always kind of use that uh, pleather. Um, you know, I think you'd look good in a burlap suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that early <laughs> depression look myself. Do we have any more, McKay? Yeah, there's one more on that same email oh, chain. Okay. Sorry, uh, Jimmy, I think you've been... No, we need the important questions. You've been trumped so. out here. It's from uh, Caitlin. Caitlin. Yeah. Caitlin Mueller? Yes. So uh, she says, we have four vintage steel case chrome cantilever chairs that we would like reupholstered or recovered back and seat. They are generally, they are uh, gently used and currently have original fabric. They look very similar to this. They provide a link. Uh, we'd like to consider a performance fabric or faux or real leather. Well, that, yeah. that's a no on leather, but they do say a performance fabric, which is good. So, which we'd recommend always over over leather at this point. How many does she say she has? Uh, four. We don't have much luck with these vintage steel case chairs, and. We would need to see it because she's shown me a picture that she's, it's, it's not the exact one, right? Yeah. She said it, to, it looks very similar yeah, to that. We need to see it because she might have a saddle seat without, that's, that's attached to the, that's wrapped around the chrome that we won't do. What I see there is like slip seats, but I have no idea what she has. So she says, see if she can come in sometime with that chair for us to look at. Sounds good. Yeah. So Jimmy. Jimmy, we've been going for almost an hour. Should we catch up, Patrick, on the comments or questions on there? Okay. Yeah, Randy's making a lot of good points. Yeah, why don't you read some? Um, so let me, let me go back to what he was saying. So, so he was saying about the price, and he, what you were saying about how much foam is nowadays, uh, that he undercharged. 
he so undercharges. Yeah, he realized he undercharges. But you know, isn't yeah. the, is it different out where he is or no? Well, it's for it, everywhere, isn't, right? Isn't that what we realized too? Yeah. About the about the foam as of yeah. recently. No, we might have to go through our whole I mean, the inventory charges, online and change everything. Up, we can't keep up with with this. Some some companies have um, bigger companies have uh, triggers, right? They have a trigger that automatically they know this is where bigger companies do better than smaller companies. Okay. They always know their, they, you know, they gas. Know the, they, they know the market already. Gas. Those guys are out there changing the prices. Oh, yeah. yeah. There actually is two more. Okay. And these do have, well, the one I clicked on does have photos. Um, it's from June 5th. Name is Haley. Okay. So these are pretty basic, right? Yep. Hello, I have two swivel chairs that I would like to have reupholstered. Can you please provide a quote? Those are 1200 each, labor. Because they have a little, I don't know if people can see that, but they have button backs on them. They're loose button back cushions. They're a pain in the neck. And and they've got stylized cushions. Um, I was thinking it was one welt, but it isn't. It's a box cushion. It's the same and a skirt. And eight yards a piece, Michaela. Uh, Randy was actually talking about labor on his window seat. What's that? He was talking about labor on the window seat. That's what he. Uh, what did he quote? On the one that I quoted. He undercharged. Yeah. So so Randy, what I, I think I asked him this before, what his shop time is. Oh, are we done with that, McKenna? No, there's one more. Oh, sorry, you guys. Let's finish. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I. Mentioned Let's show that. the viewer, the audience, what we're yeah. talking about. This, so this, this one. Set. This one, yeah, is a reupholstery of one love seat and two armchairs. I didn't see the love seat. It's All in right, the, yeah, the, the second seat. photo. Oh, that's like the settee. Well, let's show people the love seat. Actually, this nice. These are nice French. They look French. You know, you could tell the French. They're, they're dainty, right? They're very thinly like yours. Yes. So, Jimmy, you'd be surprised. They've got down cushions in here, so we're just going to give them labor costs of the love seat first. And I'm just going to take a look at that. It's double piped. I want to make sure they weren't taxed because tax are more. So on the love seat, um, we're going to charge 2100 plus, I'm going to see if you can figure out the chairs, Jimmy, all right? Plus, um, on the fabric end of things. How many yards do you want? 11 yards. Now we're gonna see. If, now we're gonna have Jimmy see if he can figure out these chairs, the labor cost and yardage. Jimmy. Oh my God! See, see what you see. I agree. We did something like this before. The, the, the uh, those are French. Yeah, that's almost like the chair that I did before. Yeah, you had the piping that you did too, didn't you? Or the seam that, that mm. goes on in one piece. They're little hard chair. They're, they're difficult chairs to do. Yeah, mine was much more square. Um, Let's see. Total time, probably a good 10 to 12 hours. I would probably say... What happened? Oh, hold on, something happened there. Are we off here? <laughs> Are we off here? No, we're good. Uh, yeah, I'd say a good 10, 12 hours of labor. And uh, probably a good... Hmm. Eight yards? Each? Yeah. Yeah, that you you're pretty good on the labor end of things. So Yeah, because I mean something like this is you know, it's an old it's it's definitely probably with regard to um probably reinforcing new webbing and probably the the coils and trying to put the edging back on, rein, probably a lot of reinforcement there. I think so, like you and I did. We're not into that yet. I mean, we're assuming, by the way, with most of these that they're just reupholstery, so mm -hmm. So with the eight hours, if you had 80, 80 uh, you said eight to 10 hours. Right. So let's say about $800 each labor. Right. That's really spot on, except mm -hmm. that she's got that love seat. And then, so we'll consider that, Michaela, and say 775 to make it to kind of like we were talking before. Okay. To make it 
I mean, we are dealing right now in a very strange economy. There's inflation, and people are starting to ask all kinds of questions. Well, they want to make sure that this, you know, yeah, even... Yeah, so I'm competing. It's not like even six months ago when we were just throwing these prices out, not not thinking in these terms. So they have another, the love seat, too. So that's a consideration, and they're lowering the price on the chairs. Okay. It's just what I'm doing. The fabric, you're way over... Um, you got to be careful on fabric. If you overestimate fabric, you're competing against somebody else that might be better at estimating fabric. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say six yards a piece, Michaela. Bottom line. Okay. See, so that's that. I'm just expressing what my thought, what my thought process is for people. Mm -hmm. So if they're doing this, um, you, you really it's not it's it's a little salesmanship. I don't think it's dishonest. I, I just think it's I do want the work. Mm -hmm. So it's not dishonest because we're doing it for less than what we normally would. Right. I'm not inflating anything. I'm not inflating anything. I'm, if anything, I'm going the other way now. Yes. Well, so, you're, you're so, trying to make business into the shop, so you're right. not going to... So the yardage is important, too, because if we just discussed how expensive fabric is. If, mm -hmm. you, if you tell them they're going to need eight yards a piece on them, mm -hmm. and the other guy is saying five or six, like like I just said, mm -hmm. that's a four-yard difference. That's 88 times, 90 times four. That's almost four. Right, and fabric being, like you say, I mean, it's different. So that could kick you right out of an estimate right there. Mm -hmm. you know, so you have to be careful. Okay. We are, we have to compete. I mean, that's the American way, right, Jimmy? Yes, so, so they tell me. So you're in a business where there's no competing uh, transit company that's... No, we're it, baby. You're the only, ride only with thing. Us and don't so ride at all. People have to put up with all kinds of nonsense well, with look you. Well, look, look who they <laughs> run into first thing in the morning. You know, you go to London, you got 12 lines leaving London. They're all privately owned trains. You could take your pick. Yeah, I don't know how that ever happened. But, you know, <laughs> hey, you know. Well, anyhow, so do we have any more comments or questions or emailing, Patrick? Do you have um, anything else to say yourself if not? Well, Randy says he's $65 shop time, work out of the house. I don't have rent, so that helps him a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. He charged 150 on his last window seat, reused the foam. How long did it take him? Uh, he didn't mention. Well, it took him a lot longer than two hours, I bet. Randy, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. But those, those big window seats could take some time. Easy. You know, when you go from the cutting to the to the sewing and the piping, you gotta you gotta. We we aren't very good at keeping track of every minute of our time. By the way, upholsterers. No, before have, you know, you say, "What do you mean two hours?" You know who's worst woodworkers at keeping track of time. You know who's really good plumbers. <laughs> yes, they, they as soon as they get the door, they already know what they're going to be doing. That's right. All so right speaking well, of time, that's we an hour like, and twenty. Yeah, and I'm sorry if we bored you. No, guys. I think good. this was very good, Jimmy. Well. Uh, is the check at the door again like last week? The, the, I told you, those platform shoes are waiting for you in the corner, and, they, and they're ruby colored. <laughs> ruby colored. So you go out tonight in your little... Oh, never Metallic mind. ruby? <laughs> <are> they... <laughs> I'm glad we're finally getting everything back in order here, though. Yeah, first I think show. it makes a difference with Patrick and Michaela here, don't you, Jim? They added yeah, dementia. it's pretty boring with just you. <laughs> <laughs> you add dementia, and they add dementia, <laughs> so it's great. It works out for everybody. We did, we did get a response from two of the Ooh, emails. A late response. Already? Yeah. yeah. Might as well, wow. uh, before we log off. You're seeing it live here, you guys. Yeah. Um, live action. Obviously, somebody heard something. So, uh, this, Maybe they're watching. So this first response is from Caitlin. That's the one with the uh, vintage steel case chrome cantilever chairs. Okay. She says, hi, Kevin. Thanks for getting back to me. Exclamation point. They are in storage, so hard to photograph right now, but they are identical to the link I sent, which has lots of photos. If necessary, I can try to also get photos of ours. Okay. Well, let's just give an estimate. She seems okay. sure. Okay, yeah. so those are like, basically they're like uh, two slip seats. So we get like $90 each for a slip seat, but usually on these, because there's more labor in it even than that, we'll go 225 each. Plus one yacht each. That's what you call service, right? Oh, well, yeah. Instantaneous estimates? Where else are you going to get that? I don't know. I mean, now, do you know your name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm going to check my uh, wallet. Jimmy, here. we work it fast. Come on. Yeah. Wait till you hear the next response. But I'm going to have Michaela read that. Okay, go ahead. This is from California. California, California IA? Yeah. Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger's country. 
Get, soon you'll be going out there because you've been discovered on this show that uh, yeah, I'm going to yeah, ask you to come say, out Hey, there. geez, yeah, where was that guy that was standing around doing nothing? Oh, yeah, we can hire him. Did I ever tell you, I've been out there with Hollywood Walk wow. of Fame. I, was, oh, really? uh, I got a story about that, but I won't go into it because okay. we've right. bored people enough today. Um, so this is what this is what they said. I'm in California. Oh, so this was about the the rubberized horse hair mm -hmm. uh, for the cars. Mm -hmm. Right. And I had said because uh, they never mentioned where they're located or anything. So I said we're located in Arlington, Massachusetts. If you would like to come in and check it out, we would allow you to do that. So, obviously, not knowing where they are from, they responded, I'm in California, so a visit isn't likely, but thanks. It's unfortunate that you can't figure out a way to send samples like everyone else does, and there's no way you can guarantee that this will be correct for my needs. Perhaps you can get your boss or the owner of the company to write back. Thanks, Dave. Wow. That's why I, I said how, that, that's Jimmy. why I said how rude. Well, now he's on YouTube, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, you can send us, you know, you think we should send the sample? I think a small but if, amount. If you I would send, send a, if you send a piece this big, there's no way that they can. You you'd I mean, be it, you'd be losing money yeah, to send true. a sample. Yeah, I know. It's you can't. Too, they, it's too costly. They can't uh, figure like, anything what? out by a piece this big. And I guarantee you. Well, you know what? Like I, I dealt with a fabric company that when you ask for a sample of the of the fabric, they would say, I think right now it's probably two or three dollars per sample. Right. And it would be a small sample, of, say. Six by eight inches, for example. So it would but cost to ship that to California. Right. Yeah, it would cost a lot of money. Like Probably twenty dollars for a sample. Uh, because we're shipping from one side of the country to the other. Well, no, you're talking about the five feet now. I'm talking about a sample, let's say twelve by twelve. Yeah. So if you put that in a cardboard box and send it to California, oh, no, you, put it you in could an even envelope. put it in an envelope. So I'm saying that's still going to cost you. It's still going to cost thirty dollars. That's still going to cost more than that little piece. Yes. is worth. Yes, right. No, we could charge him for shipping. But here we are discussing it, and you know, <laughs> it was small. It was, yeah, and he's asking for a free sample. Yeah. yeah. How to be polite? I can't please you everyone. Out. You can be polite. Say so, you know it is too costly for us to send samples out. Uh, but I would I would go with the suggestion. Did you suggest to go to your local upholsterer and see what they have? They'll, they'll let you touch it. They, you know they'll, they'll let you see it there. Yeah, Randy says, "Ouch." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Jimmy, it happens. I mean, you know, uh, we can't please we're, everybody. We're not, we're, well, you're a local upholstery shop. You are not a how many not, percentage of, of your customers down there in those tunnels would you say are happy customers? What percentage are oh, you? I don't know. I, I mean, I have a lot of happy people. I'm very happy with, oh, I'm so glad I said yes. And, and of course, I am apologetic about problems that we have. You know, train issues or sometimes medical. People get sick on the train. Sure. People have other issues going on, police actions and so on. And <laughs> things aren't rectified in, in a matter you, of you seconds. You do it, yeah, that's right. Well, judging by how many people jump over the uh, turnstile, let's say a lot of people aren't happy with the first. Yeah, well, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I would, I would cure that problem real quick, but let's not get into that. <laughs> well, sounds good. Well, I think that. Is that it now? I yes, that's it. it. Okay. it. This was a long show, I think, because Jimmy is yeah, so, so entertaining. You're buying dinner now. So interesting. You're buying dinner again. Yeah. And uh, thanks, Randy, for giving his input a lot of good uh, comments. Right. And everything. Yes, well, we all appreciate Randy. Jimmy, do you want to close us out? In a no, no, I want you to do it this week. You you have, you have, were on a roll. I answered, I, I'm glad I got to do the questions. It's always good to see how this all kind of works. Well, we're and now I'm kind of like the Ed McMahon to your Johnny Carson. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. That guy was good, Jimmy. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you ever see the YouTube videos of, the, of that, that show? Like, <laughs> yes, I have. watch it sometimes. <laughs> but go ahead. All right. Well, thanks, you guys, for joining us. This question and answer has been very long. It's the longest one I think we've ever done. Yeah. And next week, we hope to see you again. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.